photography is dead. I mean, it's not, but this is an absolute game changer. Of course, I'm talking about Photoshop's generative fill, available now in the new beta release of Photoshop. I've taken a few images to look at it, and we're going to try a few experiments here today, but I'm really interested in what you think about this. I know a lot of photographers are going to be upset that this is available. It's not photography, they'll say. What are your thoughts? Leave a comment below. Let's jump into Photoshop and see this actually working. This is an image of a mountain. Now let's assume we've taken the photo, we're using it for a graphic design layout of some description, and we realise that it's not quite going to fit the design that we needed. This is the sort of work that graphic designers do all the time. Well, we're going to start off by expanding the canvas, and then we'll look at what happens if we just use content-aware fill to fill in the blanks. So we select the new area, go up to Edit, content-aware fill, and we're going to just let it do its thing. And it's not done a bad job, it's filled the mountain. There are a few issues with it, and if you look closely you can see some repeating patterns, but it's quite acceptable. Now here's the difference with generative fill. We're going to do exactly the same thing, select the new area, but this time we're going to use the new generative fill feature to fill in the landscape. So this process takes the image, it sends it over to Adobe servers where it's processed, and it brings it back. And because of that, if you're doing this on full-size images, it does seem to take quite a while for it to work, which can be frustrating. Luckily, with the power of editing, you can see the results now. So there's a problem with the new generative fill, which is the time that it takes. Maybe because everybody's hammering the servers at the moment, who knows. People who tried chat GPT during the boom months might remember similar th things happened over there. It will die down once the novelty wears off. One thing I did notice, if it seems to get stuck, just click on the cancel button and nine times out of ten, it's finished the generating. What we see in this final image is something that doesn't have the repeating patterns of content-aware fill, but it still keeps itself in line with the style of the photo. It's quite amazing, really. And what's more, you don't just have a single image here. You actually get a choice of three variations, as it were. Or you can regenerate the same prompt uh, in the hope that it's going to come up with something different. But what happens when we try to take this a stage further and actually try to change the landscape? This photo here has some nice light falling on the mountains, but it looks like the left-hand side of the image is burned out. It's not, but it does look like that. How could we fix it? What if, instead of having a blob of white, we had a sun star? Let's do that. We're going to select the area that we want the generative fill to affect, and we're going to type in the box sun with beams of light and hit generate. Once again, we get three variations here, so if you don't like the first choice, there are a further few to take a look at. And it's done a very good job of sampling everything that's around it and making an image which fits well with the surrounding photograph. Again, this is quite remarkable. Not that it's possible, as stable diffusion models have been able to do similar things for some time, but how well it's just integrated into your workflow in Adobe Photoshop. Let's move on. Now, this can really replace content-aware fill, although I would suggest using it sparingly, and I'll come to why a little later. Uh, let's use this same tool to remove the walker from this shot. It's simple enough to do. We select the walker, click on Generative Fill, we don't add any text into the box, and we just let it do its thing. And it's gone, and this is a much better replacement than anything that Content-Aware could do on its own. Not only does it work on little elements like this, but you can remove quite large distractions from your photos. Let's try that out. Here, I have a picture of a shop in Laycock, and as you can see, there are two cars in the shop. We don't want them there, but Generative Fill can it replace them? Well, we're going to highlight the vehicles using the lasso tool, and you can see here I'm not even being very careful about the selection, and let's see what this can do. That's amazing. And genuinely, that is amazing. And here's the thing, I don't think that I would have been able to do as good a job of this with the content-aware fill, with healing brushes, with stamp tools. You know, I'm not bad at Photoshop, but there are people much better than I am who would have, wouldn't have been able to do it, certainly not this easily. And if you're worried about AI tools in photography, this really isn't any different than using content-aware fill. It's just a better iteration of it, more efficient, easier to use. Honestly, that's not a bad thing. And for compositors out there, this is a fantastic tool. What would happen if we'd done a shot where we needed to place a model in front of a separate background? Well, here's an image. 
and we're going to select the subject using the new bar thingy that they've added, invert that selection and click on generative fill. Now let's give this the context of entering the tomb of an Egyptian pharaoh and see what it comes up with. Now, I'm not as thrilled with these results as some of the others that I've seen. There are still some issues with this system, but it is still something that usually this would have been very difficult, and now that's an awful lot easier. If we do the same with this image of a girl and use the generative prompt forest, let's see what we get. These clearly aren't as good as the previous results, and I think that the limitation of the technology at the moment is really where you're generating the majority of the picture. The generative tools need context in order to help build the image, so without the context you're going to get a lot less realistic results. What we're seeing with this technology is something brilliant, but at the same time still kind of flawed, but the potential here is amazing. No doubt there's going to be many people who begrudge these tools being available at all. Certainly, uh, most of the photo competitions will want to know if AI was used as part of the image, and no doubt some images are going to be excluded because of it. But when you're talking about the same type of editing that previous clone and content-aware settings have given you, I'm not sure how you could exclude this tool from use overall. One caveat is that you're not going to be able to generate an unlimited amount of images with this. Adobe have said that you'll have credits every month, but they're trying to be generous with the number of credits available to you. So, available to all, but at a bit of a cost. What will this mean for the future of photography? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you'd like to explore more AI and Adobe stuff, why not take a look at, at this video about denoise down there? That's it for now. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, keep taking those photos.